Welcome to the Career Spy Gen Podcast, episode 253. This time on the podcast, the top five challenges people face when considering a career move with Michael Allen Tate. Spoiler alert, number one on the list is getting a terrible reference from your current employer because the career move was their idea. You're listening to the Careers by Jen podcast. I'm your host, Jen Swanson. This is the podcast that helps you to get the job, love your work, and advance your career. Careers by Jen is a listener-sponsored podcast, and if you like the content, please consider supporting the show as a patron. You can do so for as little as $1 a month. Head over to careersbyjen.com and click on support to learn more. We've been given time to think with this COVID-19 pandemic and time to stress and to worry. And for some reason, for lots of reasons, many of us aren't sleeping. This can only be amplified if you've been thinking about a career move. If you were thinking about a career move before all of this self-isolation and quarantine started happening, and, and maybe there is no job for you to go back to after this all ends up where it ends up. So a career move is a forced reality. Well, whatever your situation, our guest today can help. Michael Allen Tate has been an executive consultant and a career coach for more than 20 years. He is the founder and president of On the Same Page Consulting, as well as an inspiring speaker, and author. His first book, Design a Life That Works, teaches how to balance business, career, and family and personal values in an individual strategic life plan. Mike's latest book, The White Shirt, is a career parable with tools to create successful career move strategies. I hope you enjoy our conversation. So, Michael, a career transition is a big endeavor at the best of times, and some might say we're in the worst of times, not to get too Dickensian here (laughs) with this global (laughs) pandemic, but um, clearly there are probably more than five top challenges that people are facing in a career transition at this time. So I wonder what what you can tell us about the challenges people are facing right now uh, with uh, with looking to transition their careers. Yeah, uh, I don't think the challenges <clears throat> change any. I think they just get a little bit more dramatic and uh, painful <laughs> as you go through those. But, uh, you know, I, I, there's kind of five things I think people face. And one is really just first off is, uh, you know, I used to work with people who lost their jobs all the time. Uh, I was in a corporate outplacement. And one of the first things I have people do is put together a financial plan. Just, you know, basically, what's it look like for the past next three months? And I think that's really good for anyone to do that first. Just something simple. And uh, and then the other uh, challenge people face, I'll kind of go through them, then I'll walk back through if that's sure. all right. The sure. second one's assuming there's actually a job hunting system out there and there's not. Uh, And the third one is people don't really know their skills and especially they don't know their interest or don't think about how interest is really about industry and points you that way. And uh, they they use the wrong strategy, which resumes and online is absolutely the worst. And I have some personal stories that came from personal experience of my own. And then the main thing, though, is they try to do it alone. Hmm. So. And that's kind of the five uh, big pop buckets of things I think people have challenges with in general uh, when they're changing careers. And I did myself when I tried to change mine. So, so. Okay, well, let's dive in then. Okay. <clears throat> well, uh, you know, the financial plan is pretty simple. Um, it's, you know, just a budget is the main thing. And uh, there's plenty of, and that's not my bag. That's not what I do. But uh, just simply, you know, if you had to look, no matter if you lost your job at any time or looking for a job, it's going to take three to six months for you really to find something, most people to get something they want. And in the work I used to, when I 
used to do when people lost their jobs and and they would take sometimes six months or so but during that time if you don't really have a clear picture of uh, what you need and as a matter of fact even when you're looking for work uh you know if you're not clear on the income you want you can lose pretty quickly because you don't know where what you need but the you know the big issue that people have is just assuming there's a job hunting system out in the in the workplace in the world like indeed or sending out resumes personally i i lost my job when i was uh, you and i were talking you're a pastor i was in the ministry and i was really good at it but it was so stressful it was about to kill me and uh is and i really i realized one thing though if you've ever been a, a professional religious leader there's nothing i remember when i left what can i do and i realized there's nothing i can't do because you faced every possible problem in the ministry but so, uh, but I assumed there was a job hunting system and the career coach I went to assumed there was one too. And he had me take four or five personality tests. And he said, he declared that I should be a HR director. And he uh, sent out three or 400 resumes. And I got one response. And I remember sitting there going, I mean, I have a, ma- I have a master's degree. And I mean, what's, all, what's going on? And I was beating myself up. And then I realized after a while uh, that I had simply chosen the worst possible way to find work. Right. I, so many I, do that. So many people do that, though. Well, uh, in, in job search, when you've lost your job, I, I used to tell people, your, your initial response is wrong. Everything you want to do to, in, in your gut tells you to do this. It is probably wrong. You want to. You'll want to go out and tell people you've lost your job you and ask them if they know of job openings or you want to go send a resume out. I mean, that's just not going to work because here's how it works. Instead of a job hunting system that we plug our resumes into and there's people looking for us and just waiting to get it and we go to sleep at night as Indeed tells us and wake up the next morning and have all these job offers in our computer, there is a, a table at every company. Every organization has a table. And there's a few people that sit around that table every week and they look out at the opportunities. They look out at the threats. They look at those and they say, you know, some, we have this problem. Do you know somebody? You you guys know someone? We sure don't want to go through HR because that'll take us months going through that. Do you know somebody? And, uh, and if you've, uh, you know, if you, in your resume, seldom ever gets through because HR's job is to screen people out. So I just want you to imagine that. And if you imagine that, how in the world could you get your name at that table? What's the best way to do that? And, uh, and to me, that is having uh, a plan, a real simple plan. And uh, I've told you about my book, the white shirt and uh, where it tells you how to put together a one page plan to. uh, So basically what you would do uh, is kind of goes to my next point about you not knowing your career your interest in your skills is a uh doing a, a basic a career assessment and to begin by doing a family career tree a family career tree family okay tell me what tree. that is it is looking back at your family and the adults you grew up with and the careers they were involved in we all have a career heritage i don't call it a legacy but we have a heritage there are three things that impact our career decisions. Number one, our parents. Our parents are number one factor for careers. The other is our peers and, and peers, professors, other people like that. And the third one is profit. Hmm. So you go with profit, you go, you go for money, and you'll always end up in the wrong place as the driver. Your peers are usually not very, you know, how many... I don't know, you, you, you do career work. How many accountants you've ever had come in and say, how'd you become an accountant? Well, my roommate decided to be one. So <laughs> I thought they could make a lot of money. So I thought I'd be one. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and that, uh, in, so, and, but your parents influence your career a lot, choices. And I'm not saying that you follow what they have done, but just be aware of that influence they have on that. And you do have some, I mean, I know, look back at my, my past i've had uh, there were artists and writers and teachers on my parents side and you know that kind of make understand that i do have kind of a 
I have some uh, gifts that are kind of born in me. And besides what God put there, you know, there's some other things that influence us. But uh, that that career tree. And so and I've, I've done that with kids a lot. And then I had a guy who was 65 two years ago. He was retiring from uh, the ministry. Didn't know, He wanted to work, didn't want to do pastoral work anymore. We did his career tree, and guess what? He had five bankers in his background. He had never <laughs> even thought about it. Wow. So he goes to a local community bank, and now he's a he's a, a rep for nonprofit organizations from the bank. Fabulous. And see, it all ties together there. Sometimes we just get stuck thinking, what can we do? And a lot of times there's some answers there. Uh, and also it gives you a way to go back and talk with your pe- your parents and your other people about careers and kind of get you networking but anyway so uh uh so i take that now back to the plan so if you if you've done a family career tree you've done you know you've put together a resume so you understand what your skills and gifts and abilities are take some there's some good assessments online that you can take to get some feeling about because you know as uh i'm sure you're for you're familiar with what colors your parachute yeah uh, what, where, and how. Richard Bowles was a mentor of mine. He he's uh, helped helped me so much. He died, you know, a couple of years ago. But so, what are your skills? Do you like to work with data, people, or things? Where do you like to use those skills? And that's your interest. Uh, I always say career should be spelled. I'm going to change the spelling of a career from C A R E E R to C A R E A R because it is about your ears. <laughs> The, what do you what what do you love what language do you love to be around? We all have a language. You know, you love the language of pastoring. You love before you loved it of health and other things. But we all and once we understand the the hat we wear, the skills we wear, and the field we stand in, which is a field of healthcare or ministry or automotive, whatever, then we have an idea of sort of what would fit us. And uh, so if you have those two things, your skills and ability, you can put together a small plan, a one page plan. If you go on my website, whiteshirtbook.com, you'll see examples of one page plans. And the plan has uh, a one on as it's kind of horizontal on the left hand side. It'll say, here's my current situation. The next paragraph will say, here's my target geographically where I'd like to work. Here uh, is the type of place I'd like to work in. Here are some skills I love and problems I love to solve. But on the right-hand side of that horizontal page is a list of potential companies that I might work for. Hmm. And you take that and you go the way you find a job. And you can do it by phone. You can do it one-on-one. I know nowadays it'd be best by, by phone. Right Nowadays we can't do that. <laughs> can't do that, but you moment. can still... Yeah, you can send, instead of, when you, you call someone, they say, yeah, I'm looking for something, and I don't, um, they say, send me a resume. You say, well, can I send you my plan, and let's just talk about that? Because, you know, here's the one thing to never do in a job search. That is to ask somebody if they know of a job opening, or that they know anyone that's hiring. Because next time, because you just ask them to do something that's probably a, impossible for them to know. Next time you see them, they're going to walk on the other side of the street. Because they're embarrassed because they wanted to help you, but they couldn't. Right. But if you send the plan and you say, I don't expect you to know of a job opening. I don't expect you to know of anybody that's hiring. Would you look at my plan and give me some advice on the companies I listed there and what you think about them? Good. Do you know somebody that it might be good for me to talk to that's there? And could I use your name if I call? If you want to have a short job search, that's the way to do it. Have, you want to get depressed and take forever and really get frustrated, stick with your plan of sending resumes out. But that's the way it works in the world. Because uh, in the midst of all, when, every time you, if you put together a plan, you know, uh, providence sits in. And you and I would, would call, <laughs> would have a name for that providence for God, but uh, it does. And a, and personally, I was in a, a, a career. I know you have a lot of listeners who want to get better at where they are right now. don't necessarily want to leave and look for work, but it all still applies. Uh, I was at a big consulting firm, uh, and we had a, uh, 
mean, it's across the nation. I was working for them. I've been working about five years. I love my work. But I was getting tired of it. You know, we all had this loop. We go up and down. And I was in the, the bottom part of it. And so I thought, well, I don't want to do this anymore. So I, I in, intuitively back there, just first, I got out and I wrote down what I wanted. I wrote down, I want to work here. I want to do this stuff. I don't want to do that stuff. And I shared it with one person outside my company, not, not even shared inside, uh, because it wasn't the kind of culture you could do that in. Nowadays, you could, do, you could go and talk with someone. But I shared it with him, and here's what happened. I, had, I was about to leave, and the whole company shifted, and they created that position I had written down on that sheet of paper, and I took it. <laughs> now, if people would say that's one in a million, but, you know, uh, clarity is the key. Cl you know, what do you really, really want? And so that's what I think this opportunity of this pandemic that we're in, this time alone where we have to sit by ourselves, is a chance to really get clear on what you want. And it is an opportunity in a month, you're either going to have, you know, in a month, you're either going to have a plan and a good idea of what you really, really want or you're not. Right. So I say take this opportunity to, to put one together and, I mean, uh, and there's, you know, and I got free workbooks on my website that you can download and get a friend and do it with with them, and uh, uh, and then it, use that that strategy of you know, talking with people and sharing a plan. And because what happens, people love to give advice if if you if they can give you if you ask it in the right way. And have, asking someone advice on actually a concrete plan is a lot different than typical networking you hear about. So. Right. Sorry, I'm, I'm talking your ears off. No, that's great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Keep yeah, talking. <laughs> so, so anyway, so that's, uh, uh, so I'll take a breath here. Anything come to mind you want to throw at me? No, I think that's good. When I, when I do this with clients, I have a um, jumpstart your job search challenge, and it, it has a lot of the same ideas yeah. as, you know, sort of reflecting on, you know, what it is you really value and in your life and and what do you not like to do what do you love to do and sort of where are you yeah. drawn so mm -hmm. that's similar to making a plan um mm -hmm. before you start doing anything externally you know you have to go internally and really right. do some self-reflection and so your point about us having more time many of us not all of us but many of mm -hmm. us having right. more time right now to do that kind of introspection is is a good thing in a way yeah and uh but <clears throat> but it's it's still hard to do it alone yeah i mean it's you know, two are better than one because if one fall down the other be there to pick them up we can <laughs> pull ecclesiastes together and uh <clears throat> i mean it's true you know just and it and it's our natural instinct is to pull in and do it ourselves and it's wrong sending out resumes our instinct is wrong <laughs> Well, it so doesn't do anything. It's a big waste of time. Right. Well, yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah. And so the, because uh, I would t t really, uh, m most of our natural instincts around job search is, tends to go the wrong way. And sometimes mm -hmm. if you want to do something, just say, what would happen if I did just the opposite of what I'm thinking about doing? <laughs> <laughs> and it's called the power of negative thinking. And um and so, but I mean, this, you know, uh, uh, I'm, I have a new book coming out about transition and you know, my, my basis is that, uh, that change comes to bearing gifts and you know, what's your gift that you can uh, take this time to, uh, uh, with your job search to really find out what you want and start making connections. Because if, you know, if you have a plan, and you call you call people and ask them for advice because job search is really research. Uh, he, I always say, and Richard Dick Bowles used to always say, you can in uh, in job search you can either be a job beggar, or I'm begging for a job, or a research person. Mm. So choose your role because no one really likes someone who's who's asking for a job, sending resumes out. But if you approach it as a research project. I'm doing some research during this time when we're off and we have some time at home. Would you tell me about your occupation, what you do? And people have time. I mean, some do. Pastors don't have 
have time right now. <laughs> no, sure. neither do healthcare people or, or healthcare grocery people. store clerks. <laughs> right. Yeah, and all those, but but most, I mean, it's still the majority of us have some time, and people love, you know, you're healing people when you ask them for advice, and you know that. They love, people love to help, and they mm -hmm. love to help and do that, but don't go in with just nothing. Go in equipping them to help you. Most of the time, people People say, I have a plan. I say, where is it? They say, it's in my head. And I say, you don't have a plan. I'm sorry. You have an idea. Kind of like uh, Mike Tyson, who said, everybody has a, uh, a strategy until they get hit. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't take Mike Tyson's as a great sharer of wisdom around the world. But, the, uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so have a written plan. Just as simple. And I actually, you can do this if you don't want to do that. Uh, uh, I worked with a guy one time who was 55 years old. He lost his job in manufacturing. Uh, he was a material manager. And he was, uh, <clears throat> and so he came to me and I worked with him. He would never, and he, he was involved in church. He was involved in all these places. He never asked anybody for advice. He, nobody even knew he'd lost his job because he's ashamed of it. Mm. And uh, finally, I got him to, uh, talk to some people about it. And I said, here, what I want you to do, I want you to write down five companies and put the, that you think you might like to work for and put them in on the index card and carry it around with you. And when you meet somebody and you're sitting doing anything and the thing to talk about, just say, you know, I lost my job and I'm looking for something. Do you know anything about these companies? He was getting his tires changed one day. And he was thinking about going from from manufacturing to medical field and other places like that. And he's uh, he sat down. He's having his car said The lady was sitting there. It was she and him, and they were talking. And she said, "What do you do?" And he said, "Well, you know, I lost my job about a year ago, and uh, kind of looking around." And he pulled the card out and handed it to her and said, "These are the kind of places I'm looking at." And she said, "Well, you know what my husband does." He's an administrator at the hospital down the road. I'll have, why don't you call him? Now he's in, he's, he went in and put pro manufacturing processes in place in that hospital. Wow. They hired him to do it. And it all came from just giving, you know, giving something people tangible. When you ask people for advice, they want something tangible. They want a resume. They don't need a resume. They need a plan or they need a list of companies or something that gets their, gets their mind going so they can, you can help you help them. They, they can, you can help them help you. <laughs> yeah, we know like what that. you mean. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes my, sometimes my tank gets tangled up. So, <laughs> so, so we, we, you sit down, you do your history. Mm -hmm. um, you have a plan. Yeah. Um, you're not sending out resumes yet. What else are you doing? Uh, you're, uh, you're talking to a couple of people a day about your plan. I mean, a couple that's, of people that's a what day. You're yeah. yeah. I mean, and uh, yeah, just a couple of people a day because w what happens is they'll, uh, they'll refer you to someone else. Mm. And now I want to warn you about something too, is uh, one thing about job. If you're looking for a job outside, you need to stay in control of the flow of the information because you'll somebody say, well, I'll call so-and-so and I'll let you know when I talk to them, say, Thank you, but I know you're awfully busy. Would you mind if I just call them and used your name? Yeah. Right. And then that way you can go through. Uh, now, if you're inside a company, uh, you know, I mentioned about my little plan I did, but I worked with, you'll see if you look on my website, you'll see an example of a person that was in one, he, they were in a marketing department and moved to IT inside a company and their plan is in there because they had, what they did was they wrote a little plan like you would if you're looking, you know, here's, here's what I like to do. Here's my skills. On the right hand side, they listed the departments in the organization. It was a big, a big place. And they, uh, and they went to the directors of all those departments and talked to them about their plan. And they moved all the way over from to IT. Got some, and, and so that's in there uh, because it, because uh, I know a lot of people just want to do better where they are. And, um, uh, and just taking time to, you know, and uh, so anyway, that's, and just asking for advice, you know, just all, not about openings or who's hiring or what's going on. Just take those words out of your mouth and think of this as a research project and uh, 
takes the pressure off everybody and you too. And actually you'll make some good friends and all that stuff along the way. Yeah, because sometimes people want to stay in the organization because yeah. they still believe in the organization, but just yeah. are tired of the particular role they're in and so want to move to something else. You know, when I, I worked in the hospital for 23 years and uh, and I used to move around every yeah. three, four, five years um, yeah. because I'd get bored, you know, and I knew everything there was to know. I mean, you know, yeah. in my role in that particular setting, well, now what? You know, what else is out there? And a hospital it was a big place to work in. Yeah. So I did three years in emergency. You know, that's mm. pretty high stress and pretty exciting. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> cardiac intensive care units, um, you know, yeah. and then my last my last posting was in hospice palliative care, uh, which I loved. Um, yeah. And and that was very different than all those other places. So yeah. and pediatrics and, you know, you name it, I was there. But it was uh, it was every few years I'd move around just to get mm. sort of a jump start in your energy yeah. and to feel interested and to learn new things. But you can stay yeah. within the same organization if you still yeah. love it. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. you learn the values of the, and that's called the doom, the career doom loop. Are you familiar <laughs> with the doom loop? Google it. Okay. Uh, there are four phases people go through in their careers. They start out excited. They get good at it. They still like the work. Then they start not liking the work. And they, it's called uh, the third quadrant where you're going, ah, maybe you should do something else. It's about three years out. It happens to everybody. If you stay in that job and try to hang on, you go to, if you're in the hospital, it'd be life support <laughs> in quadrant four. <laughs> and, uh, and you can always tell when a person's in quadrant four because they say this, seven words of a dying career. I've always done it that way. And so uh, we all go through that. It's a four-year cycle, four to five-year cycle. Everybody goes through and it's natural. And, and so, uh, yeah, so, but, uh, and it sounds like you just, you kind of made those moves on your own and, of course, you you know that physiologically, every seven year we're act, every seven years you're actually a different person. <laughs> yes, and uh, that and so uh, and uh, anyway, the seven. Anyway, I don't want to go there, but <laughs> the se seven's that perfect number that tells completion. It's time to move on to something else. So, uh, uh, let our fields lie fallow, and I guess that's what kind of what we're doing now, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I do some things here, but uh, anyway, that's uh. So did we cover the five top challenges? Uh, I think we did. Yeah, the challenge was have a plan. Uh, I don't assume there's a system. You know, uh, be sure you know your skills and interests. Uh, don't do it alone, and use the right strategy. Uh, and there's one more thing I'll add that's uh. uh friend of mine mel robbins i don't know if you uh, she wrote a book called the five second rule okay not, not like dropping the food on the floor <laughs> <laughs> the five second rule uh, is about how to get started when you can't get started and uh, it's uh <clears throat> there's a video mel robbins if you look it up called the five second rule it's on youtube it's probably one of the most followed out there and it talks about when she uh she was depressed and uh had lost her job, about to lost her family. She couldn't even get up in the mornings. Her kids were late for school. Anyway, she, the story in a nutshell, and you need to hear it from her, was she walked by the TV going to bed one night and a, a rocket was actually being launched. And she walked in the room and she heard him say, five, four, three, two, one. And she hmm. said, and it blasted off. She said, that's what I need to do. I need to blast off in the morning rather than lay in bed, hit the snooze control again. And so the next morning, the snooze, the alarm went off, and she just went five, four, three, two, one, and she stood up, uh, and uh, she took a step. So if you count, so if you know, you know, you know, when you tell people to get mad, you tell them as a pastor, now count to ten before you say anything, right? <laughs> that slows you down. Counting backwards makes you take, gives you a chance to make an action. So five, four, three, two, one, take a physical action towards something. And you'll be amazed what happens. Mel Robbins, who was homeless, almost homeless and depressed uh, six or seven years ago, is now the, one of the best-selling authors, and she has her own television show. 
uh, uh, it's, it's an amazing story, but it's all came down to that five, four, three, two, one. And I hear people sitting home. How do I get started? Well, this would, this is a way to do it because it, momentum's hard to get start. It's hard sometimes to get, especially when you're by yourself. That's why mm-hmm. I'm doing it alone. But, but it's called yeah. So the five second rule is a real interesting concept. It's a real practical and, and I, actually it helped me get my first book published. I used that concept. I was sitting, uh, here I had the book manuscript and I'd I'd been rejected by I don't know how many uh, agents. And so a friend of mine who had had a book published years ago, uh, he said, well, I know this guy used to be in publishing. You ought to give him a call. And I'm going, man, I don't want to call anybody else. And I had listened to her tape. And I went, five, four, three, two, one. And I wrote an email. To the, <laughs> I didn't even call him to the agent, which I mean, that never works. 30 seconds later, I get an email back. When can we talk? Oh, fantastic. He saw my book. He said, I know the publisher for you. Actually, it was published in less than three months after that. But I mean, just, you know, taking that action and doing that, sometimes we need a little technique to help us get going. So I would just share that with you as a thought. So That's a great thought. Yeah. Um, can you tell us about the white shirt? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the white shirt is a, uh, <clears throat> it's a shirt. Uh, it's a shirt. No, it's not. <laughs> It is. It's about a. Uh, it's a. It's a. It's a parable about four boys who grew up in Persia 2,500 years ago, and uh, they all were put in the wrong career by their parents, and three of them stayed in the career, but one of them decided he was going to find his way, and he wanders through the wilderness and meets interesting people, and he discovers this system for finding your work in the world, and so that a system is what I just went through with you with those uh, the those concept so it'll take you a couple hours to read the book it's an interesting fun book but the end it has seven steps to find in your career and there's videos for every step it's online on my website there's a workbook that takes you step by step through the seven steps on my website they're all free and the book itself is uh, a little paperback it's 14.95 it's in audible it's on amazon it's a uh, kindle it's all those books but uh but uh, so that's the white shirt book. Well, I just like parables, you know. <laughs> I think you and I know someone who used to tell us lots of parables. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I want to uh, encourage you if during this time when you're at the, uh, you're having some time on your hands, is to uh, find a friend. And as I mentioned, the white shirt book is the only career book ever designed to be done with a friend. It's got uh, videos in a workbook that you you and a friend could get together and work through in about a week or two. And in a week to two weeks, you'd have your own plan. So when things turn around and things open up, you'll be able to have something in hand rather than starting again by what do I really want. So. I'd encourage you to to do that. There's actually sample plans. You can see what a plan looks like just by looking at the where it says sample plans on the website at the white shirt book. And give it a try. I think it could help you in in a couple of weeks. You'll ever have a plan or not have one. I encourage you to put one together. And uh, so when the world turns back around, we'll all be in a better spot. <laughs> so. so tell us where people can find you. Then what's the how do they get to your website? My website is michaelallentate.com. It's Allen is A-L-A-N, uh, Michael, A-L-A-N-T-A-T-E.com. My book website is the landing pages, whiteshirtbook.com, like a whiteshirtbook.com. And that's where you can get in touch with me my, and uh, my email and all that stuff there as well, too. Perfect. And so you've already given us lots of advice. Do you have one last piece of advice or have we covered it? Okay, good. No, I saved the best to last. (laughs) Excellent. There's one rule in job search, inside or outside a company. And it's the only rule. And that is ask for a job and you'll get advice. Ask for advice and you'll find a career. (laughs) Wonderful. Thank you, Michael. This has been uh, full of great information and I look forward to, uh, to sharing you and all your work with the Careers by Jen audience. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Jen.
It's been a pleasure. You've been listening to Careers by Jen with Jen Swanson. If you like what you heard, please share this. You know, if every single person listening today shared this episode with just one friend, our audience would be twice as big just like that. And the more people we can help with our content, the better. So help out a friend and help grow our audience by sharing this show with someone you know who would benefit from the content. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that, and together we can make a difference. Until next time, take good care.